Ever since I started my journey back into reading fiction, the one series that I've been seeing people obsessing over is the Akatar series. It's everywhere. So finally, last month, I decided to read it and find out what the hype was about for myself. And I loved it. I took you guys along for the first book, the second book, and now I'm taking you guys along for the third book in this beautiful masterpiece of a series. She gives you exactly what you were hoping for, exactly what you were wanting. So much betrayal is going on right now. What is the reason? Oh my God, <laughs> this is terrible. It already gains one star for me for being pink, like this beautiful, beautiful pink. And it gets another star for me for being floppy, like this floppy spine is everything look at the map of Pridian as always it's just so beautiful so always have to take a look at that before starting whoa i read for a few hours last night i got to page 166 just like a brief little recap i was so shook and so happy that the bond between rice and favor could not be broken it was just the most beautiful thing how they faked all of that and they communicated all that and they were all aware of what was happening and favor was like dropped into the spring court and she was spying for them and i was just like this is literally amazing <laughs> and i was so happy that she got out so now she's back at the night court and she has lucian with her and her sisters have been turned into fey and they're just they're not adjusting well so excited to get back into this i haven't read all day they're back under the mountain Ryzen and everybody is trying to get, I don't even know how to say his name, I think it's Kair, to get him to get his army to help in the war against Highburn. And at first he asked for Feyre, but then after Tamlin brings in Eris, he's like, no, that's not enough. And he says that he wants space because he heard of Valeris. And I'm like, I'm still so mad that Ryzen used that as the proof of his goodness, like, couldn't he wipe their minds? Mm. I feel like this changes everything, but you know what? <laughs> so much betrayal is going on right now between Rice banding together with Eris and opening up Valeris to Kair, Kair, I don't know how to say his name, for his army. Feyre trying to get the bone carver to help them. Like, oh my God, there's so much going on. I feel like there's a lot of war strategy going on that I'm actually very interested in because it's not too much of it. It's like you still get a good amount of like the characters and the love stories that are going on. But you also get a lot of strategy, which is kind of cool. And dude, I can't wait for this meeting between all the High Lords. And I wonder if Tamlin's gonna be there. And I also wonder if Tarquin, like the High Lord of the um, Summer Court. It's been a hoodie up kind of day, but I think I'm like more than halfway through this, according to Goodreads. I'm on chapter 39, page 373. <sighs> so much has happened, guys. So much is always happening. But they found out that Elaine is actually a seer because after she came out of the cauldron, she just was not the same. She just kept repeating these things that didn't seem to make sense. I kind of caught on after a certain point. I think when I caught on was when Nesta and Feyre were in the library and exactly what Elaine said happened. And basically what they're trying to do right now is they're trying to train Nesta to be able to fix the gaps in the wall before the Highburn army can storm through it. But it's a slow process, it's moving slow. She takes Nesta down to this library that's in the House of Wind because they're trying to find more information about the wall and they are under attack by these two soldiers from the Hybern army. Feyre ends up making a deal with the beast that's at the bottom, like in the pit of the library. She literally had to make a bargain with him because they were going to die. But now, after that attack, the Hybern army was able to march into the summer court and they launched a full-scale attack. Rice, the whole inner circle, and the Illyrian warriors go over to help and to save them. People are starting to find out that Feyre is the High Lady of the Night Court and there's never been a High Lady before. I'm a Rice and Feyre stan, hardcore, don't care about Tamlin. I'm actually reveling in his pain. Okay, that sounds really crazy, but like I actually hate Tamlin and literally Rice and Feyre are just perfect. The last thing before I do go back to reading, there's just so much going on. Like I can't possibly comment on every single little thing. So if there's something that happened that I haven't said, but you guys want to discuss it or you want to hear my opinion on it, 
just put it down below in the comment box and I'll answer because there's definitely so much stuff. I'm just trying to catch the big things. So the meeting that is supposed to happen where all of the High Lords come together, they're moving it up now because of the attack from Hybern on the Summer Court. Feyre is saying to him, at this meeting with the other High Lords, what role will you play? And he says the usual one, like, you know, the a-hole rise in version, the mask. I slid my hand from his face and put it over his heart. I think the time has come for us to remove the masks to stop playing the part. He waited, hearing me out. Valeris is, no, is secret no longer. The king knows too much about us, who we are, what we are. And if we're to ally with the other High Lords, I think they need the truth. So this is pretty significant because everybody knows Ryzen is like this evil, sadistic person. And is Tamlin gonna be there? Can we just admire how my Hydro Flask is matching the cover of A Court of Wings and Ruin? I mean, it's just beautiful. Good morning, guys. It's the next day, but I just want to, of course, talk about some of what I read last night. So the meeting between the seven High Lords has happened. Tamlin showed up. It was as chaotic as I expected. It was perfect. I just, I loved every moment. I was just eating it up. I just feel like Sarah J. Maas, like she gives you exactly what you are expecting. She gives you exactly what you were hoping for, exactly what you were wanting. And then she throws in a bunch of curveballs. King of Highburn broke down the wall and now it's basically like full on war. It's been a wild ride. I keep saying I'm almost done. Like that's relative because these books are ginormous, but I say with a book this big, this is called almost done. I'm more than halfway. I'm probably like 75% of the way through chapter 49. At this point, the war is in full effect. Taylor, <laughs> yo, he just keeps popping up so randomly. The author really has us thinking him to be a villain, but he's not, I guess. I don't know, it's so confusing. There's just so much sacrifice. Like everybody's just trying to out-sacrifice the other and like it's beautiful, but sad and frustrating. Bryce's little speech before they all go into battle has me on the verge of tears right now he says this to the inner circle after he says like something to them each individually he says the great joy and honor of my life has been to know you to call you my family and i'm grateful more than i can possibly say that i was given this time with you all and then it says we are grateful Ryzen. amran said quietly more than you know i have a feeling something bad's about to happen i mean they're in war so that's already bad Not a redemption story for Feyre's dad. Nest is fighting the King of Highburn while Cassian's on the ground, literally dying. And Feyre is clinging to the cauldron. And I have no idea what Amran is doing. I have no idea what's going on right now. Cassian better not die. No, oh, Cassian's dying. Okay. I thought that the cauldron heard her say that she would offer her soul to save them and that it was taking her soul as it started saving them. What is wrong with Feyre? Like, actually. Amran's gone, but now the cauldron is broken, which means that it will literally swallow up the whole world. So Favor's trying to fix it, and Rice is sending his power through her to fix it. But he keeps saying, I love you, which is scaring me because I'm like, is he gonna die? Oh no, 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 no. Oh my God. I'm a lie. How could she do this? What? is the reason oh my god no mm -mm. why would she ever do that oh i just cannot i don't even want to finish this book right now he had known he had known he had nothing left and stopping it would take everything it would cost him everything he'd kept his shield up so i wouldn't see because i wouldn't have said yes i would have rathered the world ended than this this thing he had done and this emptiness where he was where we are <laughs> oh my god this is terrible they might be trying to bring him back yo this book this book has turned me into a psychopath <laughs> i am feeling every single emotion that exists right now i am gonna burn this book bro so now rice's life is in the hands of tamlin Basically, they're doing for Rice what they did for Feyre when she died, where each of the High Lords gave some of their power. Tamla was the last person who needed to give some of his power, and Feyre was begging him, like, please, please, because it looked like he was, you know, after all they've been through, it looked like he wasn't going to do it, and she, and he said, be happy, Feyre. <laughs> Rice is back. We brought him back to life.
Literally, I'm chucking this book out the window. The emotional roller coaster she just sent me on, and for what? And Amrit's okay too? Chapter 81 is from Ryzen's point of view. And I hope that it's not crazy. Hopefully it doesn't end on some kind of like crazy cliffhanger. Guys, I'm all done. I finished all 699 pages of pure art, of pure perfection. I said to myself that I was gonna wait to rate this, but come on. It's five stars, it's five stars. It's six stars even, like I don't wanna be dramatic, but it is like six stars, just like A Court of Mist and Fury was. It literally made me feel every single feeling imaginable. Rice and Feyre are just perfect. Their inner circle is just perfect. I'm so glad that things ended well. Like there were literally so many things that could have gone wrong. So many things were supposed to go wrong. There were supposed to be so many unhappy endings, but I'm so happy that we got a happy ending in this and it's beautiful and i'm really looking forward to reading the other books the first one was like you know four stars but the last two have significantly exceeded my expectations and i'm just so glad i really am i'm like thankful to all of you who really like encouraged me to pick this book up because it is so good so <laughs> I need to go and process all of my feelings and my thoughts after reading all of this. <laughs> I gotta go process. I gotta go process. So thank you guys for watching this video. Like I said before, if there's anything, like any event or any scene in the book that I did not comment on or mention, but you want to talk about, just write it down below in the comments and we can have a little discussion there. But until then, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. When you're not here, the sun don't shine When you're not near, I don't feel like I do when you're with me It felt like sudden